Well, hello everyone. Now a while ago I got a comment. Somebody was suggesting, why don't we just use the serial output from a personal computer to drive the IGBT? And they said, it should output the right voltage, should have enough power to drive the IGBT. Well, it's actually not a good idea because it doesn't really have enough power to drive an IGBT. And it's not isolated either. The serial port will only output 12 volts. But, nevertheless, I am interested to see the outcome. So today, I'm going to try it. This is a setup, as you can see. Standard 12 volt sealed lead acid battery, IGBT module. The uh, flashlight there is, will be our load. Laptop will be the personal computer and we'll have the oscilloscope to trace the output of the serial port and we'll also measure the output of the IGBT and we'll measure the output of the computer when it's hooked up to the IGBT gate. So, let's start. Okay, first we're going to use the oscilloscope to trace the output of the serial port. This will be with the serial port not connected to the IGBT gate and the laptop is just running Windows 3.1 and we're going to use a terminal program to send a text file through the serial port. Now you can see on the oscilloscope here the serial port transmit pin with reference to the serial port ground pin is just holding it minus uh, about 10 volts. So we're going to transfer this text file and this is just zeros and ones in the text file and we're going to see if the oscilloscope can pick up the trace. And that's it. It's done sending the file. Alright, now I'm going to send that same text file again with a nice close-up on the oscilloscope so you guys can see this. And that's the end of the file. And this is just how it's hooked up here. There's the serial just connected to the oscilloscope. But now, we're going to connect it to the gate of the IGBT. We'll see if it can even turn the IGBT on, and we'll watch the output of the serial port when it's hooked to the gate. This should be interesting. Okay, we have the serial output hooked to the IGBT gate. We have the serial transmit pin hooked to the IGBT gate pin, and the serial ground pin hooked to the IGBT emitter. So, I'm going to send the file and if it has enough power to turn the IGBT on, the light should turn on. So let's see. Send the text file. There we go. What do you know? It does have enough power. It's pretty interesting. Now let's take a look at the oscilloscope. Alright, I'm going to send the file again. As you can see on the oscilloscope, those nice square traces disappeared as the serial port is having a difficult time charging and discharging the IGBT's gate capacitance. So, in all actuality, it doesn't really have enough power to run the IGBT at a high frequency. One last experiment, I'll change the baud rate. Okay, that last baud rate was 1200, and I've dropped it down to 110. Let's see what happens. You might be able to see that light flashing in the background. It is flashing a little bit slowly now. See if we can adjust this.
So that's interesting. It took a much longer time at a lower baud, baud rate, obviously as it would, and the light appeared to be flashing at a much lower frequency. But it did still have a little bit of trouble turning the IGBT on and off quickly, so it'll only do it slowly. And like I said, there's no isolation. So I thank you guys for watching, and I hope you learned something, and I'll see you again soon.